In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Nintendo Switch emulator, Sadachi, and I will be using Windows 11. Okay, let's head on over to the official Sadachi GitHub page. I will leave the link to this page in the description below. Once you are here, you will find your download for Windows right here. This emulator is also available for Mac. Go ahead and click on it, and your download will start. Also, you will need a program to extract your emulator as well as other files, and I recommend 7-Zip. If you don't currently have this installed on your PC, I will leave the link to this page in the description below. I have saved my Sadachi file on my desktop. You guys can save this file wherever you like, whether that be an SSD, external SSD, hard drive, or external hard drive. It's up to you. Now to get this emulator up and running, you're gonna need additional files, such as your keys file, firmware, and switch ROMs. Now I am sorry for these three things, I cannot tell you here on YouTube where to find them, but if you check out my Patreon page, link in the description below, I will have some videos there that can help you out. So let's start with the emulator, we need to extract this file. Assuming you already have 7-Zip installed, you wanna right click on it, go to show more options, 7-Zip, and extract to Sadachi. This is gonna create a new folder containing our extracted files. We no longer need the zip file, so we can go ahead and right click and delete it. Now inside of this folder I have created called firmware. We wanna extract this file, go right click, show more options, seven zip, and this time go to extract here. In this next folder I have my keys, so once again, go ahead and right click on the file, show more options, 7-zip, extract here. Delete the zip file, and inside of that folder, you should see prod.keys and title.keys. And last, my switch ROMs folder. In this folder is where I have my DLC files, update files, and some Switch ROMs. And in order for your Switch ROMs to be playable in the emulator, they have to be as an NSP or XCI file type. As you see, most of my ROMs are, besides this file here, Crisis Remastered. Now when you first get your ROMs, they will be in a compressed format that needs to be extracted. We're gonna use 7-Zip again, right click on it, go to 7-Zip, and extract here. That file has now extracted into an XCI file, which is playable. We can delete the zip file. Now, if you wanna move your firmware, keys, and switch ROMs into that Sadachi folder to consolidate everything, you can. I'm just leaving everything separate for this video. Now let's open the emulator folder, scroll to the bottom, and this file here is the emulator. Let's open it. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is install your keys. So let's go up to tools, install decryption keys. Go ahead and locate wherever you have your keys. In my case, on my desktop, in that folder I named keys. Select your prod key and open. Decryption keys were successfully installed, okay. Now we can install our firmware. So let's go back up to tools, install firmware, locate that firmware, which is also on my desktop in that folder firmware. Once you select the folder, then you wanna hit select folder. Now, even if you don't install any firmware, this emulator will still run your games, but the reason you wanna have an updated firmware is in case you're playing newer games released on Switch, you won't have any problems playing those games as you would with an older firmware. Now let's install our games. Right here where it says double click to add a new folder to the games list, go ahead and double click right here. Locate our games on my desktop in that Switch ROMs folder. Once you are in that folder, just hit select folder. And your games will load in. Now if you notice, three of my games have add-ons. You see Crisis Remastered has an update and Mega Man 11 has an update and DLC. That's because some Switch ROMs will come with updates and DLC built in. Now let's say you had to download your DLC files and update files separate. Well, I'm going to show you how to add those into the emulator. So if we look right here next to Super Smash Bros, the game does not have an add-on, but I do have some DLC files. So what I wanna do is go up to File, Install Files, 
I'm gonna locate that DLC, which is in my Switch ROMs folder. In that folder I called DLC, open this folder, and here are all of my DLC files. This is everything from characters to costumes. Now, if I wanted to select just one file, I will highlight it and come down to open. But if I want to add all of the DLC, I'll just highlight all of it and then hit open. And then it'll show everything selected right here and hit install. 99 files were installed, okay. And now if we look over here next to Super Smash Bros, you will see my DLC. Now if you have any updates for any of your games, then you will install those the same way as we did the DLC. Now let's go up to emulation, configure. Now if you want to see your hotkeys, go ahead and click right here. And you can memorize these or you could change them around to whatever keys you like. Come down to graphics. Now we really don't have to change anything here. Everything at default settings will run great. Just make sure that your API is set on Vulkan. This will give you the best experience with this emulator. But if you have an older CPU or GPU, then you may wanna come back here if you're getting bad performance and try running your games on OpenGL. That may smooth things out for you. For device, if your PC has a graphics card, make sure your graphics card is selected and not your CPU. Make sure VSync is on so we don't get any screen tear. For the resolution, by default, it's gonna be on one times. And that 720p on the left side is for when the emulator is running in handheld. And that 1080p is for when the emulator is running in dock mode. And if you wanna know what mode your emulator is in, then down here at the bottom of the emulator, you will see your mode. Right now, we are in docked. So when upscaling, you wanna pay attention to the right side. I'll go ahead and turn this up to 2160, which is 4K. Note, when upscaling, make sure you have a pretty decent PC, otherwise you will experience a lot of lag and stutter in your games. Now let's come down to controls. You can select the type of controller you want to use. I recommend leaving this on Pro Controller. Under Input Device, you will see every controller that you have connected to your PC. Now I have tested an Xbox One, Xbox Series, PlayStation 5, and Nintendo Switch Pro Controller with this emulator, they all work. Any other controllers you may have, you will have to test them out for yourself. As of right now, I have an Xbox One and my PlayStation 5 controller connected. I'm going to use my Xbox One controller. Now once you select your controller, the emulator will automatically map that controller out for you. But if you want to change some buttons, then go ahead and click in the box next to the button you want to change, and then it will give you the option to select whatever button you want to be that button. Now let's save this controller profile, come up to new, and you can call it whatever you like. I'm just gonna call it P1, okay? And if you have multiple controllers connected to your PC, then you can go ahead and set up player two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight. So if we go to player two, I could change this one to my DualSense controller. And for example, I will call this one P2. And then come over and hit connect controller. And then down here, you should see two green dots letting you know that controller one and two are ready to go. We are done here, hit okay. And now we can go ahead and load up a game and I'll do Streets of Rage 4. Now some games may stutter when you play them for the first time, but no need to worry, it's just the emulator loading in your shaders. Once all of your shaders are loaded, your gameplay will smooth out. Now if you want to go full screen, all you do is press the F11 key. Thank you guys for watching. I hope the video was helpful. If it was, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already.